going to show you how I achieve the hand engraving on the uh, Tenor Madness um, saxophone that I engraved for that particular company. Um, the front of this bell is finished. It's completely engraved with all the fill-in work and things. And I've engraved uh, the most of the design, um, but I will show you a few uh, techniques that I use here to create these special effects. Um, but I wanted you to get an idea of the overall effect so that you can be watching for that when I'm engraving and using those special techniques. Let me show you the side of the bell. This is quite a, a popular um, flower design that um, is used in the engraving world. Uh, many people request that. And of course the leaves and the scroll work is quite um, eye-catching and attractive as well. So this is, uh, I'll complete this bottom section of the design for you. So let me get my insert that goes inside the bell to protect the bell while I'm rotating and doing the engraving. I put this uh, a protective bell on the inside um, so that I can also rotate on this ball here as I'm engraving. I can move both back and forth and I can move sideways to um, get it in the right position to create the, the um, line that I want. I'm going to um, choose the number 40 flat tool to begin the outline, um, which is what I've used on the rest of the outline here. Uh, no, it uh, creates quite a, a mark, an engraving mark there where you can definitely see the boldness of the outline. As you can see, I have to continually be moving as I'm engraving to get to work around the um, you know saxophone bell. As obviously it's not a flat surface; it's a rounded surface. Therefore, it requires continuous motion motion to keep that tool moving and to uh, prevent slippage and to prevent. I mean, to um, make a a continual pattern uh, with symmetry on both sides. So after you've done this as many years as I have, you, it's kind of a feel that you can just feel that you've got the right angle. Um, I, I like to go exactly to the opposite side because while I still know the feel of what I just did it seems to be, uh, shall I say, an effect, a boomerang effect of do one side, do the other side. That way they kind of match. Although with hand engraving, you know, everything, just a half of a turn of a wrist can make a difference in the outcome of the engraving line. Um, the pattern that I have up here is guidelines is what it is. It's not exact. It's uh, just something that gives me a good starting place so that while I'm engraving I can kind of get a feel for where it's going. Um, over the years, I've kind of changed this, and I, I like to put the two outer leaves on and then put the center leaf on. I, I think the effect of it is much more pleasing. So, as you can see, I went right through that outline and cut it right off there because that's the way I think it looks better. So Now, I'll have to work coming down to meet the other design. Instead of starting on the bottom there, I start on the top and work it down. Rub off those extras there. Create a little bit of a decorative tip. Note how the brass and lacquer build up at the tip of the engraving tool. And it's actually a solid kind of roll once I complete that line to where I just, with the flick of a wrist, flip it off at the end. So that is the outline, very much like the other two that I showed you. Now we'll go on and we will start with the fill-in work to complete these two pieces. That, that was a 40 green, and so now... I'm going to work with a tool. I've colored, I've coated these so that um, it's easy to separate them and put them back where they need to be once I'm finished with them. And I have a pile here. So this is 
a yellow. I, this is one of my yellow tools. It's a fill-in tool. And it's actually a tool I made. Um, some of the tools you have to make yourself um, just because they don't sell them. And this is what some of the many masters over the years, the Stenbergs, the um, Bob Evans, oh gosh, who else? Um, I'm trying to think of the other guy's name from Elkhart. Anyway, we all had to learn how to make our own tools like this to um, get the effect that we wanted with engraving. Um, you just can't always buy them. So this particular tool, you have to push and slide and wriggle all at the same time. It requires quite a bit of control. Not necessarily so much strength, but control and knowing ahead of time What's going to happen with that tool when, when you move this way and when you move that way? So now I need to take another yellow tool that I like to use on the tips. It's the same tool that I used on the tips of the others. to give Just fill in that end there and it just kind of gives it a finished look. Just on this and then on the ends of these as well. It's the same fill-in tool I use for that. And then I'll have to get a couple of more sizes to complete this fill-in work. And then we can finalize with just the last few details. Get this one out of the way here. And then I need to come back from this side and, and go down so that that's a match and look like they just joined together perfectly there. Now I need a yet smaller tool to complete the fill in work for the flower here. Just gives it a, quite a feathered look to it as it moves along. Do the same thing on the other side so it's symmetrical. But each of the engraving designs also allow for a little, um, in the event that you would slip, that you can add something else to the design and it, it looks like it was planned that way and it begins there. So even though there's symmetry in it, there's also irregularity where you can add something else if necessary. That completes that portion of it. Now let me get this fill-in tool. This is this is quite interesting the way this works. It's a zigzag, and it's very easy. This is another tool that uh, was made handmade by myself. As you can see, they just really glide along very quickly. Um, this is also the tool that we use to. Give that little look right on the outside of that design. I believe there's two more tools to complete this. This is called a push tool. Take this push tool and literally remove the brass. The inside of that little part of the flower. And then the last part to complete this engraving to go around and make di deep kind of dots around the center of that. It just kind of highlights it and gives it a little bit of dimension, a little bit more texture to it, therefore a little bit more inter interest. So there you have it. One completely engraved bell, saxophone, tenor saxophone bell for Randy Jones of Tenor Madness. Thanks for watching.